present, Your Honor. Your Honor, I'm currently attached to DCI Kiliman. I'm performing general criminal investigations, Your Honor. For which party? For the, okay. So this uh, ruling was uh, presented before this court via a miscellaneous application dated 13th of uh, December 2022. The application sought the pre-trial detention of the applicant, sorry, for, of uh, the respondent by the applicant for 14 days to allow the applicant through uh, PC Stephen Kibui and any other investigator complete investigations on a case of uh, grievous harm uh, contrary to section 234 of the penal court. The application is supported by eight grounds set out on the face of the application and uh, an affidavit sworn by PC uh, Stephen uh, Kibeu, the investigating officer. According to the affidavit, the respondent was arrested in uh, relation to a reported assault case where the respondent is uh, suspected to have assaulted her boyfriend, Asad Khan, on 12th of uh, uh, December 2022 at Preston, a court, Klimani, and uh, inflicted life-threatening injuries. The investigating officer indicated that uh, he visited the scene, which was uh, documented, and uh, obtained uh, blood samples and other evidence was collected for forensic analysis. The investigating officer deponed in his affidavit that uh, the custodial orders will enable them to rec uh, record statements from the complainant and other key witnesses. Number two, to trace and arrest the respondent's accomplices. Uh, three, to issue a P3 uh, form to the complainant and, and have it filled. To monitor the condition of the complainant who is in a uh, hospital, subjecting uh, the recovered mobile phones and SIM cards to, uh, from the respondent to cyber analysis and obtain uh, necessary reports, obtaining call data records from the respondent for the respondent and uh, on the complainant's uh, telephone numbers, uh, escorting the respondent to the government chemist for DNA sampling to compare to compare with the forensic evidence uh, collected from the scene, and also to profile uh, taking of fingerprints and forward the criminal records uh, to uh, records registry to ascertain whether the respondent has a, a, a previous criminal records and uh, uh, to finally forward the file upon completion uh, to the ODPP uh, for directions. The application was opposed by respondents, uh, councils, uh, who briefly uh, cross-examined the investigating officer. Um, the respondent submitted that she was uh, a victim and had uh, hidden herself to evade abuse uh, when the in, uh, intended complainant um, self-inflicted uh, the injury. The respondent submitted that uh, the grounds given did not warrant uh, detention. She submitted that she has uh, she had uh, she had already submitted her form for forensic analysis. That uh, the forensic evidence has already been collected from uh, the scene, and uh, further submitted that uh, the key witnesses uh, have already recorded uh, their statements. Um,
in their concluding submissions, the respondent uh, sought uh, to guard the media from covering the proceedings in this matter and cited Section 8 of uh, the Victim Pro uh, Protection Act um, on the right of privacy and the respondent, uh, uh, as the, co the, co the respondent could finally turn out to, to be a victim. So the court has considered the application and the submissions made and uh, perused the authorities which have been cited and the issue for determination is whether the application is merited. Article 49 of the Constitution provides for rights of an arrested person. Upon an arrest, uh, the person may be charged, detained or released on bond. Inasmuch as the state has a right to investigate offences and uh, use all necessary mechanisms at uh, its disposal, the need to protect the rights of uh, suspects or persons of interest, and um, in particular the rights uh, to liberty or freedom must always be safeguarded and only um, limited as provided for under Article 24 of the Constitution. Where a person is arrested, um, their pre-charge holding or detention may only be allowed when there are compelling reasons. Uh, based on compelling evidence while balancing the right uh, to liberty of individual against uh, the need to secure evidence. The issue herein is whether, the compelling, uh, whether, whether there is compelling evidence uh, which has been given to allow the application and uh, order the detention of the respondent for 14 days as sought. When I look at uh, the 10 reasons given at paragraph 10 of the supporting affidavit, I find that uh, none of uh, the said uh, grounds is a compelling reason to warrant pretrial detention as uh, all the aspects mentioned can be covered while the suspect is out on bond. One can, for instance, ask, must the respondent be in custody in order for the complainant or other witnesses to record statements. Uh, must the respondent be in custody while forensic examination is... Uh, while forensic examination is uh, taking place at uh, the government uh, chemist or analysis of phone data is being done at uh, the forensic lab. Another question is, must the respondent be in custody for the condition of the complainant in hospital to be uh, monitored. My finding is uh, a resounding no to the above questions. The applicant has not uh, availed any evidence to show that uh, the respondent is a flight risk or likely to interfere with witnesses. And these are, uh, in my view, the only key and genuine reasons the court would have considered, uh, perhaps if, present, uh, if presented. Uh, however, none was presented uh, before the court. The respondent has indicated uh, willingness to cooperate with the police to complete investigations and uh, therefore it is a finding of the, the court that the applicant has not presented any compelling reasons to warrant issuance of uh, a detention order against the applicant. I will direct, therefore, that uh, the respondent uh, be released from custody on cash bill of 100,000 shillings, and uh, the respondent will be reporting to the investigating officer of this case at uh, Kilimani Police Station uh, once a week, every Monday, until the conclusion of investigations. Uh, regarding the application to bar the reporting of the proceedings on account of uh, the respond, uh, respondent ending up being a victim, the Victim Protection Act uh, defines a victim as a natural person who suffers injury, loss or damage as a consequence of an offence. Of an offence. 
it is premature for this court to, at this stage, label any party herein uh, as such uh, when investigations are still ongoing. I find, therefore, that no good reason has been given to bar the media, which has a duty to disseminate information um, from covering the proceedings herein. Um, such order can only be given um, when there is evidence presented of mis misrepresenting, which is not uh, the case herein. I'm sure the media uh, know their limits to report fairly, and therefore the court will not uh, direct or give any uh, directions uh, regarding how the matter should be reported. So that is the ruling. We'll mention this matter on 12th of January to confirm the status. Thank you, Anna. Aspect of the attendance of the of the suspect on Monday. Yes. There will be numerous public holidays on Monday, right yes. from now on. Yes. We're considering the court can maybe consider a Thursday yes. or a Friday. Uh, so that week. this is no problem. Yes, that's no, can, can because the public holiday even the police may not be operating on that day. So we can review that uh, to a Thursday. Yes. So the next one is... stay with them. I was not told that one. Do you think that's a reasonable alternative, Bonaki Bay, just in fairness to the respondent? She can't enter her own apartment, so she has no place to live, isn't it? Isn't it? Does she have two apartments then? I don't know, Your Honor. Okay. But you have sealed the one place where she lives? Yes, Your Or Honor. lived with her boyfriend? As a crime scene, Your Honor. Sorry? I have sealed it off as a crime scene, Your Honor. whether you found any evidence of weapons being used? Uh, no, Your Honor. So far, so far. I didn't do our letter, Your Honor, in the family. I'm just yeah. asking you what you found. Did you find it? There's some items I collected. No, one of Kebe is a direct question. Did you find any evidence of weapons be having been used? Yeah. Wait, Mr. Kimathi, to submit on the custodial application. Most obliged for your guidance. So, and uh, my lord, I wonder what we are trying to state is that this is a case that could turn with her being a victim, and we want it to rely based on the media presence. And maybe um, pursuant to your directions. Uh, 
we rely on Section 8 of the Victims uh, Protection Act. Um, we know we cannot determine at this point if she is indeed a victim. But the questions that you might ask the, the witness and even his uh, preliminary findings is that at the end of this all she will be possibly a victim and her right to privacy would need to be protected. So as I allow uh, my senior to address on the authorities, I would like the court to consider section 8.1a. Perhaps the court can give an order today, pending any uh, conclusion of this matter, that the identity of the suspect not be published, the identity of the individual in hospital not yet be published, pending either closure of this file or further directions. With that, my Lord, Your Honor, I would uh, request the senior to address on the authorities which we have provided. I'm sure the court... To deny, Your Honor, no compelling reason have been given to you. Instead, what the investigating officer has presented to you is a circumstance where they say we have an injured person. We are still not aware how the injured person got injured, but we want to hold the authorities already before the court. Thank you, Your Honor. That is subject to investigations. And that is why we are before you. <coughs> you know, we submit that the state has given a compelling reason why the respondent here should be held in custody. You know, the most compelling reason is that the I.O. needs to escort the respondent to the government chemist at Kenyatta Hospital for collection of her samples. As they indicate that she was found in that house, there was a pool of blood in that house. Necessitate investigations as to how the complainant was injured and who is responsible for that injury. And in the interest of justice, Your Honor, we will not be opposed to the application under the Victim Protection Act, Section 81 to have today's proceedings not to be reported and to keep the names of the parties involved from being revealed by either the media or the persons in court today. Parties, I will give uh, a ruling tomorrow uh, morning on the application. The respondent will be remanded at Kilimani Police Station uh, in the meantime. As regards the application under Section 8.1 of the Victim Protection Act, I direct that uh, the media do not disclose um, the names of the respondent and the intended complainant pending the ruling tomorrow. So that is, those are the directions of the court.